Okay, people seem receptive to the uh, T72 comparison, so we're keeping at it. T90 of the future, let's go. What began as a simple new variant of the dragon quickly became its own separate model. The DRG-1G Grand Dragon was created when coordinator Takashi Kurita wanted a more powerful mech. Luthien Armor Works would create and introduce the DRG-1G variant, which was essentially just a DRG-1N for PPC and an extra medium laser. This simple weapon sword was all the dragon needed to be even more effective than it already was. The man from DCMS unit sword, prompting Luthien Armor Works to completely stop producing the original 1N variant and retool its factories to produce the 1G instead. It was around this time when it would be considered a separate model and get its name, and the 1G would be used as the basis for future Grand Dragon variants. So it looks exactly like the, like the uh, dragon, so we're just gonna go straight to the variants. Though the Grand Dragon does gain the extended torso twist quirk because they changed the chassis to the newer Nif Nick 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 Varn Nick Varn Nick Varn. I'm not sure how to say this. Nick Varn Type 5866SH. But I think it in universe it only applies after the RG5K because the 1G is again it's literally just a weapon swap with the 1M. But uh, I, uh, it seems like in tabletop, at least according to Mega Mech, at least the One G also has the the excellent work. So I don't know. It also has a new engine, the Hermes 360 SL. But again, I think it only applies after the 5K. Anyway, the first variant is the original one, of course, the DRG One G, introduced at 3024. Again, it's a simple weapon swap. The Imperator AAC-5 was swapped out for a PPC. Where the AC-5 ammo was, they installed a medium laser there. And two extra single heat sinks were slapped on to cool down you know, the bigger P generation. Because you got two more energy weapons, one of them a pretty big one. This one costs around 5.2 million. The DRG-5K is the first proper Grand Dragon. Like I mentioned just now, it's got a new chassis and a new engine. Introduced in 3050, the 5K can go up to 96 km per hour, the new engine, and it comes equipped with a Lord's Light 2 extended range PPC on the right arm, a Telus the Cluster LRM missile system, LRM-10, in the middle with 24 shots in the left torso case. There's also three Victory 23R medium lasers, one in the left arm and two in the side of the torso, both pointing backwards now. With the rediscovery of double heatsink technology, Luthien Armor Works equipped the mech with 13 of them. The first proper model will take 13.3 million out of your bank account. There's also a commander version, the 5KDC, that removes two heatsinks and the right torso medium so they could install a command console in the head. This one is 14 million. Then there's also the C sub variant where the right torso laser is instead replaced with a uh, C3 slave receiver. This one is 13.6. 13 years later, in 3063, the DRG-7K came into existence. The chassis is now endo-steel and also comes with mask, which pushes the mech to 129 km per hour when active. The lighter chassis allows for three ER medium lasers to be installed in the left arm and also an MRM-10 in the middle torso of 24 shots in their right torso case. Don't give this mech to your unit's commander though because it only has C3 slave installed. And then that, it comes with 15 double heat sinks and it costs 15.6 billion. Just a side thing I guess, I just want, I'm, I'm just wondering. Like the whole master and slave like terms for C3. Just a question, I guess. How, how many of you think they're gonna re rename that? I, I don't. I just, I just have a feeling that, with you know how, uh, at least Western society is, you know, the term master and slave might be uh, interpreted as uh, a a nod to the American slavery. I don't know, man. I've just heard some things. <laughs> I've heard some things that some companies. Uh, trying to... No, I think it was Unreal Engine, I think. I think they were trying to... I didn't, they, they, like, they were trying to make developers not use the term Master and Slave or something like that, so... I, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm going on a bit of a left-field tangent right now. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I was just wondering whether they're going to retcon the name or not. 
it's it's just it's just it's just it, 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 nothing wrong. It, it, no, it's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> but anyway, let's go back. Uh, the seven K, right? Uh, you don't give that to your unit's commander, your lance's commander, I guess. You give the your lance's commander a DRG nine KC, which took them eight years to make for some reason. The chassis is now back to normal, and in order to put the C3 Master in the right torso, two heat sinks were removed, and the armor was changed to 9.5 tons of light ferrofibrous. The ERPPC is now a snub, the three ER mediums are now two normal mediums, one on the left arm, and another one on the back of the left torso. The MRM-10 was removed, or MML-5 multi-missile launcher, with 20 SRMs and 24 LRMs. This one costs about the same as the 7K at uh, 15.6 million. Then six years later, they improve upon the 7K with the 7KC. The 7KC comes with a boosted C3 slave system, which is immune to most ECMs. It is largely the same as the original, except for the XL Gyro, 9.5 tons of light ferrofibrous, and the replacement of the MRM-10 with an MML-5 with 20 shots of SRMs and 24 shots of LRMs on the left torso. It costs about the same as well. Then we have the 10K from the year 3114. Five heat sinks were removed and the gyro is back to a normal model. It's got a whopping 16 tons of anti-penetrative ablation armor or APA. Now this armor provides extra protection when it comes to armor piercing rounds and tandem shaped warheads. This is done by adding a second layer of ribbed steel beneath the main armor. I I have no idea what that means exactly. <laughs> if you, you Google rib steel and you get these, and I, I, I don't know if slapping these on on my could make armor better against certain rounds, but I'm not a material engineer, so what do I know? Anyway, there's a snub PPC on the right arm, two ER mediums on the left arm, and an Apollo fire control system equipped MRM20 in the left torso with 12 shots in case. The 10K is 13.8 million. It's cheap. Now we have the latest variant, the 12K. The BV is high for this one, so it's probably the best variant you can get. Introduced in 3147, very close to the Ilhan era actually, just notice. Uh, the 12K is fully equipped with clan weaponry. You get clan medium pulses on the left arm and left torso. Clan LRM-10 in the middle, with 24 shots in case 2. And a clan ERPPC on the right arm. Other than that, it's quite similar to 7K, but with 14 doubles and 11 tons of Inosphere Light Ferrofibrous. Surprisingly, it's not the most expensive, it's only a 15.5 million. There's a handful of customs, the first one being the DRG-1G Douglas. Some guy called Douglas captured this mech while he was just observing a battle. We'll get to him later. But this custom is kind of a reversion to a dragon. The PPC is back to an AC5 of 20 shots in the right torso. The LRM10 is now a smaller LRM5 with 24 shots. And two lasers, the right torso and left arm ones, were removed. And an SRM6 was put in place in the left arm with 15 shots. The guy reduced the overall heat output because, I'm quoting him here, my Alaskan brain would melt. We'll get to him in a bit. Then we have the DRG5K Emery. His mag is actually one of the first few like 5Ks that were produced. So this custom is less of a custom and more of a prototype, more like an early Dutch one. The chassis, for example, is a prototype Endro Steel, and the engine is a normal sized one except of a uh, XL. It's got like a, it's got freezer heat sinks, which are doubles. But I, I'll just show you a picture because I honestly don't know how to describe them. <laughs> what does the 15 and 3 mean? Huh? Anyway, it's got 1.5 tons extra armor, and it only has three weapons. A prototype ERPPC, an LRM-15 of 16 shots, and a medium on the left arm. I mean, it's pretty cool. I guess you get to see like a developmental version of it, of a, of a mech. I don't, I don't think there's a lot of those, so... It's pretty cool, actually. And then we have the DRJ-7K Mark, the personal mech of one Mark Kisomita. It removes the XL for a light engine, which reduces the top speed to 108 km per hour. Two heat sinks were removed, but the armor is 10 tons of normal ferrofibrous. For weapons, it's got a heavy PPC, an LRM-15 with 16 shots in the right torso case, and an ER medium left arm. 
The Mark also has a C3 slave receiver. There are two less canon non current variants that exist. One of them is undeniably German. <laughs> First one is the RG1GS from MacWarrior 5. Instead of a PPC, you get a large laser. The three mediums are now pulses, and the LRM is now two SRM4s. And SRM8, if you will. With a whopping 1,280 shots. That's a lot of missiles. The next one is the German fan. Yeah, it only exists in Germany. If you were a Deutschlander and bought one of these bad boys, you have this unique variant that only exists in your country. Yeah. The DRG-1GK DC. I'm only going through Sonar for information because I have no idea where to get like the TRO or the uh, RRS for this one specifically. But anyway, uh, according to Sonar, it deletes the rear medium, so it do a cockpit could be installed. That's it. Unique. Let's begin with the Alaskan guy that has to stay cool. Professor Douglas Running Elk. A scholar. A gentleman. In the entirety of the new Avalon Institute of Science, NAIS, he is the only one who is from Earth. Or Terra, I guess. Originally from Barrow, Alaska, Douglas left Terra seeking fame and fortune as a mercenary. He will find employment in Team Banzai, serving as a coolant truck driver. Coolant trucks are considered neutral targets while in battle, so he will park up nearby a fight and just watch. His crew were probably scared to death every time he did this. One day, a Kuritan Grand Dragon would approach the truck, but then stop and just stood there. Curious, Douglas climbed up into the cockpit to find the pilot unconscious. In a bid to save the pilot, he applied first aid and then piloted the mech to friendly forces. He was then promoted to a mech warrior and got to keep the mech. This is when he rearmed the mech so that the heat output was lower, so that his Alaskan brain would not melt, and he said that he works best when he's chilly. I mean, I guess there's some truth in that. A cool mech is a mech that can keep shooting. Later, after the Fourth Succession War, he interned at the NAIS under Dr. Banzai and eventually became a highly respected professor. I swear this guy is some kind of inside joke or something. The dude's from Alaska, then he drives an ice truck basically. And then when he gets a mech, he lowered the overall temperature of it. Because Alaska, man. <laughs> Buso Senshi Emery Wilk was, as previously mentioned, one of the first few recipients of the Grand Dragon. He originally piloted a rifleman before a traitor within his unit destroyed it. This affected his mental state very badly as he would later, even after years of rehabilitation, became extremely paranoid. He would always have his back against something solid, and on the field, he would be the last one in line. Regardless of this, Emery would still be a very good mech warrior. When offered to be given a proper Grand Dragon, since his was like an early model slash prototype, Emery would always refuse, stating he would rather continue to build up his own mech. Unfortunately, in 3057, while testing an experimental Gauss rifle, Emery would end up losing his life when the rifle unexpectedly blew up during testing. He received brain damage from the explosion and would later pass in his sleep a month later. Taii Ryoji Kurashige operated during Grey Monday mid combine operations against the Republic of Spear. His commanders have hailed him as a model warrior, as well as a creative leader and tactician. Although he was primarily a mech warrior, Kurashige applied and completed DES training. DES DST operatives are essentially ninjas. Space ninjas. Spinjas. His dedicated service to the coordinator was later rewarded with the leadership of a company in the new Hikage Special Operations Bell Mech Unit. And finally, we have Buso Senshi Mark Kisomita. He was part of the Sorensen Sabres command lands and would serve as the company's tactical officer. While fighting, he is known to have keen senses and sharp focus, which has given him the ability to preempt his enemy's movements and attacks. Sounds like a new type. And finally, I mean, technically, Takashi Kurita also piloted this thing during the Battle of Luthien. I'm just gonna mention that and stop right there because Takashi takes care of a lot of people. There's a lot of lore behind him that could do a his own thing. He'll get his own video one day, I don't show what more. The Grand Dragon completely phased out the dragon. By 3055, all dragon factories were retooled to produce the Grand Dragon. 
Production went unabated until the Jihad, where multiple Luthien Armor Works factories were targeted. For two straight years, Grand Dragon production completely stopped. LAW sold off some designs, mainly co-produced designs, to other manufacturing companies, and with a sudden influx of capital, built three small factories on the planets of Abi Adi, Sabinsville, and Nickvarn to continue production of the Grand Dragon. So, the Grand Dragon. I've definitely never used this one. But just looking at the hard numbers in terms of the speed weaponry and all that, yeah, it's definitely an improvement of the dragon. I mean, they did stop producing the normal dragon, so yeah, it has to be a very big improvement. <laughs> I can't say a phased one. Or maybe I have, I just don't remember. I just couldn't tell it was a grand dragon because it does look exactly the same as a normal dragon. So maybe I phased it, maybe I haven't, but you know. I haven't faced it enough times, or used it enough times, obviously, to form like an upper personal opinion on it, I suppose. So I can't say much, I guess, on that. <laughs> but yeah, Grand Dragon. The Dragon line still isn't complete yet, because there's still, like, I think two more uh, models based on this thing. So we'll, we'll do that later. But yeah, that's that. You're on Discord if you want to. I got Discord, yes. Very silent lately, but. <laughs> I also have Twitch where I stream. I, mean, I stream here as well, but what to play. Yeah, until next time, take care. I'll see you then. Goodbye.